morning. Is it? Hey, Jan, is this Cindy's or do we not know who this is? Does anybody recognize this? It, it was left at the show. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Nope. No Hogsworth. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, yeah, I don't know whose it is. Uh, we have, you know, we have regular eggs in back. Have you ever seen any quail eggs? There's quail eggs in the back. Don't tell anybody. Nobody on YouTube will see what I was just trying to do. So. <laughs> Those cool. Little bitty quail eggs. Takes takes about three of them to make one one egg. Those cool. Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> just like ostrich eggs, or just about any other eggs. They all taste like eggs. <laughs> all right. Uh, actually, there's not a whole lot going on this week at the church. Uh, we, ha we do have Intuitive Tarot on Thursday. ARE is going to meet also on Thursday. And then Art and Soul uh, noon on Sunday. I mean Saturday, correct? Jan? Art and Soul? No, 10 and noon. Huh? 10 and noon. Okay. Yeah, well, that's what it says, 10 and noon. <laughs> Okay, okay. But yeah, calendar. Uh, we should have our new one this month sometime. ARE also is going to have one of their, uh, their, like their annual thing here, May 5th. And actually, that's a good intro to um, Pierre. Pierre is here from ARE, and um, he wanted to say something. Here, wait, 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 wait. Thank you, Phil. I just wanted to thank you all for the kind words and thoughtful uh, solicitations uh, that you provided to me on the cards that you all signed and and sent. Because uh, it was a, a, you guys were very very supportive and loving, and I really appreciate your thoughtfulness and kind words. Because this was a pretty dramatic event for me, the loss of my wife. Of, 58 and a half years, and it happened like that, and wow. I was shocked, but without the support of folks like yourself, and the, uh, those, the words that you put on those two cards was very, very kind and thoughtful. I thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah. really very grateful, and I don't know anything else to do for you, but I am very You just did it. <laughs> Many very blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Earth Day is next week, next Saturday. So if you haven't done anything for the Earth re recently, just do something. Go pick a piece of trash up. Um, um, I don't know. Somebody throw something out that sounds like a great idea. It's today, isn't it? It's the 22nd. It's today. <laughs> Okay, well, then do something today. <laughs> Gee. Go down to the river, enjoy the river. My goodness sakes. Fortunately on YouTube, there's nothing we can hide anything because everybody on YouTube sees it, so hi. So. We actually had a gal here last week, um, sat right over here, and she actually saw our programming on YouTube, lives down the street, and then actually came to see us. Oh, is that you? Oh! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make some stupid comment like, I'll do it anyway, um, that, gosh, she saw us there and then came anyway, so. <laughs> so, people on YouTube, they do see us, hello. Um, I have said this before, my try 2030, I've kind of talked about it for just a second, it's a, um, uh, go to mytry2030.com, there's a survey there for the Tri-Cities, uh, they, I mean, this really I cannot emphasize how big a deal this is for, it, for the Tri-Cities. This is literally your chance to put your thoughts for people to actually see where you want the Tri-Cities to go in the next few years. Um, every major organization, ev all of this, obviously all the cities, every organization is behind this, is paying attention. 
it's it's a big big deal so mytry2030.com I know all the schools are doing it um, so I know kids are getting in there to do it and just to be a little silly again uh, we don't want all um, um, parks uh, so I know kids parks and you know game rooms in, in 2030 so get in there and give your own information obviously I think I think the arts is great I love our open spaces so but it's a big it really is a big deal so go on there and, and do that if you can great we do have a couple patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin and John said as usual there is a great woman behind every idiot <laughs> and George I just lost George. <laughs> I know he's someone here. Um, hmm. All right, well, I'll just pick one of these. Um, isn't it a bit unnerving that doctors call what they do practice? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer there. But uh, Sorry, George, I lost you. And t-shirts I haven't done any t-shirts in a long long time so you can actually buy all these t-shirts and know we have nothing to do with them it just it's kind of kind of goofy so retired goodbye tension hello pension <laughs> oh Nancy needs one of those yeah <laughs> four days <laughs> for those of you who don't know Nancy uh, does our bookkeeping and is of course on our board and thank you for all the work <laughs> yeah, this time of year it is a lot actually. So uh, here's another one. Of course I'm right. I'm Bob. <laughs> or Phil. Or John. Or whatever name you want to put on there. So, uh, and little doggy prince, love is a four-legged four word. <laughs> well, aren't you a ray of pitch black? <laughs> And, phew, that was close. Almost had to socialize. <laughs> All right. Things that make you go, hmm, hmm. Um, he gives twice who gives promptly. Yep. Plubius Cirrus in the first century B.C. See, they had smart people back then, too. Um, a guest sticks a nail in the wall even if he stays but one night. It's a Polish proverb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, men show their character in nothing more clearly than by what they think laughable. Yeah, I think most things are laughable. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> All right. Eating celery actually burns calories. The calories are burned in the digestion process, not by chewing. <laughs> Who knew? Who cared? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that man never grows old um, who keeps a child in his heart. I must be never growing old. Age uh, does not depend upon years, but upon temperament and health. Some men are born old and some never grow so. <laughs> nothing, is, nothing is more disgraceful than that of an old man should have done... Okay, I'm going to do this one again. Nothing is more disgraceful than an old man should have nothing to show to prove that he was alive except his years. <laughs> Everyone desires to live long, but no one uh, would want to be old. <laughs> I know. Yeah, fortunately. Anything else I need to know about? People want to announce? You know, we need to have a, a, a picnic. Yes. Yes. Barbecue. Yeah. Barbecue. Barbecue. Did we? Did you? We haven't planned one yet, but we certainly can. Okay. Like in like May ish sometime? Yeah, we'll pick a Sunday and let everybody know. Okay. Okay. It'll be like a potluck, we'll barbecue yeah. and do the meat and yeah. everybody can bring stuff. So, cool. All right. All right. Uh, a man suffered a serious heart attack and had bypass surgery. He awakened to find himself in the care of nuns at a Catholic hospital. As he was recovering, a nun asked how he was going to pay the bill. He replied in a raspy voice, No health insurance. The nun asked if he had any money in the bank. He replied, No money in the bank. The nun asked, Do you have a relative who could help? He said, Just a spinster sister who's a nun. 
<laughs> the nun replied, perturbed, said, nuns are not spinsters, nuns are married to God. Patient replied, then send the bill to my brother-in-law. <laughs> That ought to get me in trouble, huh? <laughs> well, you know one thing, we are the only church on Barth Avenue that plays the Doobie Brothers to start our services. I will guarantee that. So, probably the only one in Richland. Kennewick, Tri-Cities, Washington, yeah, all over the world, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will take these eggs back gently. Gently. These really are cool eggs. You know what? Makes me feel powerful. I'm sure. Thank you for asking. It's going to be one of those mornings, I can tell you that. <coughs> it is yours? Does this look like a Cindy jacket? This looks like a Cindy It has to be a Cindy That's funny. Uh, funny. Funny, funny, funny. <coughs> um, for May... Oh, I lost you. That's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, for May, we need a couple of helpers for um, a couple of Sundays left in May. So I'm going to send the um, sign-up sheet again for those people who would be willing to help with communion. If you don't know what that is, sign up and then ask. <laughs> wouldn't be too, we wouldn't hurt you. <laughs> this is not the military. It's easy peasy. This is faith, yeah. Walk on faith. Go trust. You can, you can trust. Or not. <coughs> Whichever case may be. <coughs> Excuse me, I seem to have a tickle. <coughs> <coughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Phil. <coughs> um, created this little prayer book for our expo. Thank you. Uh, it's got a bunch of prayers in it. Today we're going to be talking about grit, grace, and gratitude. So I would like to share with you this gratitude prayer that Mary Lilka wrote. So again, there's no wrong way to pray. If you speak from your heart, you're heard. And it doesn't matter how you address that. Um, I like living light of love, divine source, spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Whatever you want to do <coughs> works for you and works for us. Hate to tell you, it's all the same thing. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. So do knock your socks off for that. Um, and then to close it, uh, may it be so, as it is, uh, in the name of Jesus, whatever, whatever works for you in that regard. So let's do this little prayer of gratitude since we're going to be talking about gratitude. I'm grateful for water. Thank you, Phil. loving spirit of light I'm grateful for the abundant blessings in my life thank you for guiding me out of the darkness and into your divine light I'm thank thankful that you walk with me on this path called life and that you always lift me up when I stumble I'm grateful for loving way the loving ways you teach me and the comforting angels you send when life lessons get hard I honor you for encouraging me when I strive to do good and for showing me how to do much better. And for showing me how much I matter. I'm grateful for all the synchronicities in my life. <clears throat> I'm grateful for my fellow travelers in this wondrous earth. And for the universe of possibilities that expands before me. With love and gratitude. And so it is. Isn't that beautiful? You, that, you, send that out. <clears throat> that is beautiful. Thank you, Miss Mary. Notes. <coughs> Apologize. So I want to talk to you about grit, grace, and gratitude. And when I was 
working on this, I couldn't remember whether, or I couldn't figure out whether I should put gratitude, grit, and grace, or grace, grit, and gratitude, or gratitude, grace, grit. <laughs> you know, I think they, the three G's, they just work together. They all work together. So let's just chat with, with you a little bit about them. <clears throat> First thing, I want to I talk about, start with the grace. No, I don't. I'm going to start with grit. <clears throat> No. <laughs> well, I could. <laughs> I could, but I, I think I'll start with grit. Uh, the grit I'm talking about <clears throat> is how you, have you ever just decided you're going to do a thing and then it gets hard? But, my gosh, you're going to do that anyway, right? Right? And then just when you think you can't do any more, boom, synchronicities happen. And then it's easy again, it's wonderful, it's still hard, but it's wonderful. And then you get to it and you succeed, and then you have gratitude about that. That's the grit I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the grit of dutiful enslavement <laughs> to a task. Now there's things we just have to do, you know. Those toilets aren't going to clean themselves. <laughs> And let's face it, there's very few of us that go, oh, joy, I get to clean toilets today. You know, well, there's stuff we've got to do that ain't fun that we, that we just do. But when you've got a goal or a dream or a hope and you're pursuing it, that's what I'm talking about is, is utilizing the grit that it takes to get you there. Because I guarantee you if 50 people could have a dream or a goal and one person makes it because that person uses grit, grace, and gratitude. And the other people don't. They use that willful fortitude of trudging and drudging and doesn't get you where you want to go. Willpower does not get you where you want to go. It's a great way to start because without your will or your willingness to be on board with something, you're not going anywhere. That's, that's the boat that gets you going. But once you get going, then there's this grit that comes along. And grit. Let's talk about grit. You know, they, they identify sandpaper by the level of grit it has. And the higher the grit, the finer the sandpaper. Oh, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? The higher the number, the finer the grit. <laughs> so you start with a rough grit, a low-level grit. And you've got to get knock the big stuff off, whatever you're sanding. And then you go to a higher level of grit and you get it a little better. And then you get a higher level of grit, and you get it smooth. And when it's smooth, you can run your hand over it. It feels awesome, wonderful, smooth. And it takes grit, not just of the sandpaper, but it takes grit of will to get from stage A to stage Z. Because it's not a fun process. But the result, you're looking at the result. You become result-oriented. And when you become result-oriented, oriented that changes everything now here's where it gets all mucked up and I it's just hard because people say well don't if you can't have expectations and I agree expectations will just kill you every time because as soon as you have an expectation of here's how it's supposed to be you know that sets you up for failure that sets you up for misery especially if you have expectations about how other people should be <laughs> that's that's just going to be a killer but having expectations about how a project should look, when you get that should thing in there, that's a challenge. That, that's, a, that's heartache ready to happen. <clears throat> but if you can apply grit, that's this willingness to do a little bit more. Do a little bit more. And do a little bit more. And get finer. Get, get, get it so it's smooth. And once it's easy, then you have this or, or smooth. Once it starts to get into that place, then you get revitalized. You get recharged. You go, oh, I'm almost there. And then you have this energy. The energy to do more. So this grit is really important. Well, how do you get grit? How do you get it? Well, you can sandpaper, you go to the hardware store and get it. Yeah. <clears throat> the grit that I'm talking about, it comes from focusing on the dream. And here's the thing. Um, 
especially when you get to be my age and your dreams shift. When Nancy's retiring, her dreams are going to shift. Maybe you're at a stage of your life where you were doing this and now you gotta, that's not working anymore. You want to do something different? There's a big, huge change. Don't we love change? No. <sighs> and yet, change is vital. And change can grant us an opportunity to have a new dream. And when we have a new dream, then we can apply grit to that. But here's the thing, some of us, we don't have a new dream. We get drudging through the trudgery, trudging through the drudgery, <laughs> or whichever. And we miss out on, on having a dream or a goal. We think, well, I'll, and I'll do what I like after I get this other thing done. And you know, there's some value in that. We've got to get this tough stuff done. At the same time, if we don't have a dream or a goal that inspires us, the word inspired means God breathed. If you have nothing to inspire you, this drudgery weighs heavy. And it just one day is just drags into the next. And I hate to say it, we get stuck in that. And once we get stuck in that, it's really a challenge to apply ourselves to a new dream or a new goal. And here's the thing, we think we have to have it perfect. There's that expectation. I have to know perfectly what that's going to look like and then I can apply myself to that. No. Nope. Have a, have a feeling, have a sense. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but I think it'd be really cool to do. And then as you're really cool to do, blah, 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 then it can manifest itself in a way you've never even thought of. That's the thing about goals and dreams is they, they dream you into existence. You don't dream them into existence. You start with a premise of this is what I think I'd like to see or I'd like to feel or I'd like to experience. And then the dream, once you get started and you get this grit thing going, that's when grace happens. That's when grace happens. Now here's the thing with grace. <clears throat> I grew up in a church where <clears throat> the only grace they taught was the grace that happens because you're saved. <clears throat> and that's one of the ways. One of the ways. And let me share that with you. Ephesians, and there's, I read a ton of verses about grace. I'm just going to sh share with you a couple. <clears throat> Ephesians 2.8 For by grace you've been saved through faith. And not, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. I'm not going to take anything from that. But there's a whole other thing of grace. A whole other thing of grace. I, did I minimize that? I didn't mean to minimize that. Because that's a pretty big thing. But there's this, I want to share with you, my focus today is on this other grace. Hebrews 4.16 <clears throat> Let us therefore... Anytime you see therefore in the good book, you might want to read what happened before then so you know it's therefore. <laughs> therefore, draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. That way we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Grace is a helpful thing. In a lot of the passages that I read about grace, it always, uh, peace and grace came together. You want peace? Look for grace. They're buddies. If you have one, you're going to have the other. Make sense? One more. Real quick. And this is from 2 Corinthians 9.8. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. Don't you love that? Having always, that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. You're going to have what you need. But it's important to have this goal, this dream, and then grace comes along and builds it for you with your efforts. This is a co-creation. It's not God with a magic wand coming going and ting and it's all perfect. This is where grit comes in. You know? Phil, Phil has this Volkswagen bug that he's converted to electric. And when he bought this thing, oh dear <clears throat> Let's just say she couldn't see it. Uh, oh. <laughs> it was dirty and ugly and faded and dinged in. <clears throat> Phil said, oh no, it's going to be good. It's going to be a patina bug. Well, a patina bug is this 
where they keep it old and original, but they polish it up. So it has patina. Uh -huh. Oh, there's no way. He's never. <laughs> not going to happen. So he's out sanding. Sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. And, and uh, he gets a bumper done. He goes, honey, come look at this. And he goes, I could live with that. I, c I could live with that. Because even though the paint's kind of screwed up, it's shiny. <laughs> I do shiny. <laughs> I do shiny and sparkly. <laughs> so, so he gets this one bumper done and it's like, oh, how about the rest of it? <laughs> so how long did it take you to polish that out, Phil? Nine, ten months. Yeah, forever. <laughs> forever. This, sh this side of forever. <laughs> but he'd go polish and he'd say, come out and look at this. And he'd do half a hood and I'd say, oh, that looks wonderful. But it took grit or more ways than one. And he would do a little bit and it'd get shiny and it'd give him hope. It would give him this grace, this spurt of energy to do more. And that's how grace works. Grace comes along and gives you this boost of energy just when you need it. Just when you need it. So my question to you is, what's your goal? What's your dream? Don't have one? Oh, please, dear God, find one. Find one. Find a little one. If you can't find a big one because you don't know what you're doing, that's okay. A little one is good. You have a goal for next week? Get a goal for next week. And then find the grit. Choose the right grit. Can't use the fine stuff before you use the big stuff. Got a big job. And here's the thing. Do the hardest thing first. Darn it. We carry so much energy in dread. <laughs> and we go, oh man, I, it could be as simple as a phone call. Oh, I've got to return that phone call. And the phone call would take two seconds to tell this person, no, I'm not interested, or it take, take maybe five minutes to tell that company that I need this information, ask them to send that. But we dread. And we carry that. And then it's like, oh, everything else we try to do is belabored. But when you do the hardest thing first, and it's like, I did that, I can do just about anything, right? Then grace kicks in and goes, yes, you can, and boosts you up. So do the hard thing. Do the hard thing first. So if you're wanting to do something, maybe the hardest thing is getting more information. Do that. Do that. I don't know. And you know, ask a friend. Maybe a friend knows more about this than you. Can you ask a friend to help you? That's what friends are for, right? Friends tell you, friends, real friends, tell you when you do stupid. <laughs> and friends tell you, help you find your truth. That's what friends do. If your friends aren't doing that, they're not friends. <laughs> friends tell you when you do stupid. And friends can do it in a way that doesn't hurt your feelings. Because if they're telling you how you're doing it in a hurtful way, that's not friends either. But friends will say, hey, you know, hmm, if I were you, I'd take a look at that, maybe in a different way. Right? That's what friends do. Do the hard thing first. And that opens the door to grace. And grace is unlimited. You can have all you want. And there's more. And the key is, is applying grit. Have a goal, apply grit, and grace happens. Now let's talk about the power of gratitude, because I'm running out of time. Gratitude is this superpower. It's a spiritual superpower. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about, well, I am, but I'm not. There's different levels of grace, like different levels of grit. Uh, one level of, of, of gratitude, I said grace, but I meant gratitude. Uh, different levels of gratitude. One level of gratitude is, I'm grateful for water. Aren't we all? Matter of fact, I think I will indulge. Oh, yes, I'm really grateful for water. <laughs> The gratitude I'm really talking about is this deep inner energy that transcends logic. Not that it's not attached to logic, but it's beyond logic. It's not limited by logic. <clears throat> like if you're really grateful for... Um, 
trying to think. I'm grateful for children's laughter. Can you hear them back in there? <laughs> Let that laughter sit in your heart space. Now we could judge that and say, oh, those children should not be making so much noise. You know, they're laughing. How fun is that? I think it's wonderful. Don't make them stop. <laughs> Dad went back. Don't make them stop. They're having fun. It's okay. <clears throat> Let that laughter sit in your heart space. And what does that feel? Doesn't that feel amazing? Where it was just background noise a second ago, now there's this energy here. And in that energy is power. It's power to fuel you even further. It feeds your grit. This gratitude expands your heart space, expands your awareness, and feeds your grit. And you can have gratitude about something over here that has nothing to do with your goal over here, and it'll still expand your grit for over there. It's this powerhouse that we can utilize. I, sometimes I think gratitude is the, is the superpower to use first. <laughs> now, if they're yelling, that's a different story. But <laughs> and there goes mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, funny. I'm grateful for laughter. I'm grateful for joy, aren't you? Amen. But find gratitude. Find something to be grateful for, but fit it into your heart space. Sometimes, oh, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for Phil, I'm grateful for my home, I'm grateful for my health, blah, blah, blah. It gets to be really the superficial thing, and it, it just like kind of has dead energy, no resonance. But when you put it in your heart space and consider it with your heart, that changes everything. That changes everything. So when you find that which you're most grateful for, and sometimes the easiest thing to be grateful for is a pet. Because they are so unconditional. Um, I was really grateful for my pet, for the dog barking when the cat brought in something. Speaking of cat, <laughs> everything's fun. Yes, I'm talking about kitty cats. Um, but when you have that gratitude in your heart, there's no judgment. And when we get in judgment, that short circuits everything. Because then I go in, it should be this, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I shoulda done that, I coulda done this. If only that person did this, they should have done it that way. So as we get into that, then we drop out of this gratitude heart space, we gra drop out of grace. And then we have nothing to feed our grit and we slip into drudgery and dread and one foot in front of the other. And that's no way to live. That is just no way to live. It's far more important for us to live in this state of grace, in this state of joy, and in this power of utilizing grit. So, to sum it all up, gratitude. But not just gratitude, blah, 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 gratitude, oh, I'm grateful for, but gratitude. Really, really experience that gratitude. Let that gratitude expand your heart space. And in that state of gratitude, pick a goal. Pick your dream. Not as far as a judgment of how it's got to look, because I guarantee you, I never saw this coming. I never saw the Divine Fellowship coming. Mm -mm. No, that was not on my radar as far as a dream or a goal. It was bigger than what I could have imagined. So you can't, you can't. By affixing an expectation, you limit yourself and you limit grace. But by saying, wouldn't it be wonderful to be helpful to people, to share what I know and to be an encouragement to people? Wow! Holy Hannah. So start with that. Start with what energy do you want to incorporate in your life? What energy do you want to live with? What energy are you going to embody? What's your legacy? What's your legacy? What are you leaving as a trail of energy behind you? What's your legacy? That energy then you can apply grit to. And then grace is applied to that. 
un, un, you don't have to earn it. You're doing your thing and grace is happening. Grace will just happen. And then as you apply more gratitude to feed your grit, your dreams fulfill themselves, that your dreams will fulfill you in a way maybe you've not ever even imagined. So step into that. I think there's one more thing I want to say, but I don't know what it is. Hold on. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> not sorry. I apologize, but not sorry. <laughs> we'll wait. Anybody want to sing the, the theme from Jeopardy? Okay, got it. Thank you. <laughs> and then the gravy on top of everything is joy. You know you're locked in when you've got joy. If you haven't got joy in your life, look at what your, what your dreams or your goals are. That's a heads up that you're not in alignment. And when you find joy or when you're in that state of joy or if you're, you're looking for that, joy is the key to acknowledge where you're at. Joy opens the door. So may you be blessed with that. Mr. Phil, if you want to join me up front, please, sir.